there. I'm Rex Hunt. And I'm going to show you some ways to catch some fish. The correct equipment and how to use it. Now let's go freshwater spinning. To cast, the rod is brought behind you and then brought forward with a swift action, releasing the line at 10 o'clock. Right, I got one here. Oh, he's a nice fish. He's running. Oh, he's a good fish, this bloke. Yeah, he's a nice fish. We'll need the net there, Daryl. I've got to let him run now because he'll break me off if this break doesn't work properly. Yes, he's a nice fish, this bloke. Oh, gee, they're big, Daryl, here. Oh, he's running in towards me. I've got to get him in. Now I'm right. Right now, I've got him. Got that net there. Oh, I can hardly hold this bloke. He is big. I'll try and get him in closer to you now with that net. Oh, he's a nice fish. That's the sound that sends shivers up and down the spine of every angler. You hear this incredible sound when Big Red, or Chrysophorus aratus, commonly known as Snapper, takes your bait and tears away with it. Snapper are the fantasy and frustration of anglers everywhere, and they attract more attention in Port Phillip Bay than most other species put together. Few experiences can equal the satisfaction of landing this magnificent fish. The initial run, which tears line from your reel at a frightening rate. The hook, the excitement, and uncertainty of the battle. And the infinite delight when Big Red is finally brought to the surface are paramount in the minds of every angler. Maybe you dream of catching your first big snapper, or catching one of any size. Maybe you want to improve your technique, or maybe you just want to compare. Well, join us as we enter the fascinating world of the snapper angler and explore Port Phillip Bay in search of Big Red. Hey, hang on to your seat as we ignite the fuse to crazy and deadly stunt entertainment. And hold your breath, anything could happen. On the Daredevil roller coaster, we explore the lives of Australia's deadly action experts. Can a super kid survive playing like Superman? Will this mad Daredevil ever promote another Clint Eastwood movie? Is there a safer way to eyeball a speeding car? What's the craziest way to drive long distance in a tractor? And how can anyone enjoy the life of a mad motor maniac? You'll get the lowdown and lots more crazy Aussie action as Jacko presents The Man, Daredevils Down Under. Oi, action lovers! I'm Jacko Jackson here for The Mad Daredevils Down Under. Don't get me wrong, we're not going to see any of that mad Daredevil stuff here at the fun park. But come with me, let's have some fun. Luna Park is like Disneyland. Just for fun, I come here when there's no one around. And I can dream about all those wild action movies. And of course, Australia's got its own fair share of death dodgers and thrill seekers. And a good friend of mine, Ollie Martin, who has been researching the current life of the Aussie Daredevil. Oi, great to see ya! Hey, Jacko, this fun park's a bit of a break for both of us, but we're going on a roller coaster of deadly action with some of Australia's sensational death dodges. So, for some rib snapping, cartilage crunching action and attraction, let's get dangerous! The fun park is usually as close as we come to super thrills, but that unusual breed of people who call themselves daredevils put their lives on the line every day they go thrill seeking. 
It happens in movies, in action-hungry promotions, and on the deadly arena. It's the arena where a blood-hungry audience provides the necessary pressure for daredevils to risk their lives. Shortly, we'll see how this unusual breed live, what drives them, and how they cope with maniacal egos, injury, and even death. We'll ride in the back seat with the mad motor maniacs, the last major action show to be hauled over the back roads of Australia. Audiences have certainly dropped off. Fun attractions with top thrills on TV and at the movies have stolen the appeal for the real-life Daredevil. But when a bunch of Daredevils set out to produce the TV commercial for the Mad Motor Maniacs, they weren't to know that. It was all systems go for another tour. But while the crashes and individual daring were being filmed, we didn't want any repercussions when we rolled our cameras. But obviously, because it's Daredevil action you're participating in, you don't know what the outcome is going to be. If you get hurt, you must understand that you are here totally at your own risk. As the action gets underway, we experience a kaleidoscope of whiz-bang spectacle as the experts go from one stunt to another. Even a clown gets into the act. It's a family show. When combined with added sound and special effects, the visual material will provide the platform on which to run a series of shows, stretching across five states and tens of thousands of kilometres. As we slow down some of the individual stunts, it's easy to see why insurance men don't chase daredevils for a policy. When an act called the Dead Stop Somersault comes off, it's not only the crew, but the stuntman himself, Neville Kelly, who gets a little excited, this time. Later in the tour, Kelly is to be smashed up with an ankle break and out of action for months. As one stunt is quickly cleared away, another one gets ready to roll. The furniture van crash requires Tony Archer's dead-eye dick accuracy to drive his car at 100 kilometres an hour through poor visibility up the rear end of a furniture van. Naturally, he too is overjoyed when it works out. Have they blown their lens? Are they raving mad? Decide for yourself about the Mad Motor Maniacs, the most spectacular live stunt show ever to hit Australia. Amazing airborne action justifying international acts you've never seen before and a whole range of incredible stunts that will leave you gasping in your seats. Buckle up and see the Mad Motor Maniacs live. You'd be crazy to miss them. Tony Archer has trained many of Australia's action innovators, which goes to say he's been around a while. For three years, he was hacking it as Paul Hogan's stuntman on films and television. When Archer agreed to meet us, we took the opportunity to probe another lunatic-inspired stunt and look back at why he kicked off in the stunt profession. Well, Tony, from the look of the car, it suggests one more super stunt, am I right? You're right, Ollie. How are you, mate? Not bad. You yeah. going to tell us about it? Yeah, sure. Jump in. What hopes and aspirations did you have when you set out? Was it Hollywood? Was it the bright light? Ollie, I, I honestly couldn't answer that in a true vein as I see it now. But in those days, I probably thought, uh, great, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing something that no one else is doing and getting paid for it at the same time. Um, there was plenty of travel involved. Um, we toured extensively and uh, I just enjoyed it. I loved the thrill of the uh, crowd applauding you after you'd finished the stunt, you know. What were the original inspirations for Daredevil down under here? Was it Hollywood again? It was probably the, the image of Hollywood, Ollie. Um, of course, you know, for every hundred stuntmen there are, even in the States, only one of them will make it over there. In the minds of many stuntmen, the dream of performing came from the bright lights of Hollywood, the thrills, the stardom. It was probably the only way someone without acting or musical talents could reach for that super dream, with all its apparent glory and cash rewards. The daring heroes of the silent screen, possibly quite by accident, created the myth that backbreaking work as a stunt double for a star was an easy step to fame and fortune. No one bothered to mention that hundreds of stuntmen and daredevils have died, tragically pursuing that Hollywood dream. In Archer's case, the final nail in his coffin of imagination was hammered home by the touring Hollywood Hell Drivers. Originally, the first uh, team uh, was created by a chap called Lucky Teeter, and he uh, uh, put his first show together for the uh, World Fair in Chicago in 1934. 
After the war, of course, the, the automobile came in its own. Uh, today, nobody can live without a car, and from there, developed, of course, into a very large uh, uh, production, uh, where we have shows in the United States on every state fair, uh, every summer, in every town. And then, of course, uh, since 1953, we started internationally. I think, uh, when you talk to our boys, they, uh, I, I've never heard anybody who wants to quit. The other day, we did a head-on collision. That's something we, we don't like to do, because as you know, at um, collision, you don't, you never get out of there. Most of the time, you never get out of there. Well, we do it our way, but we do get out of there, but we shouldn't. And the two other cars are right, right on your left hand side. Who's going to hit first? Both on the nose. There they go. I'm beautiful, like a double up. Now, is the sore rib the worst injury you've ever picked up? No, I broke myself a foot one night, like uh, the uh, short table that people saw tonight, the last show, the last sack of the evening. Uh, I was going too fast, and I car the everything broke in the front, the uh, motor fell, fell, fell apart, and I broke myself a leg. But that's about a minor injury that I had. As long as the cars hold out, and long as there's money in it, I'm going to stick with it. I don't, not only I'm getting paid for it, but I love it. And you got to love this job to stay in it. If you don't quit it. The way our boss looks at it and the way we look at it is, well, if you're going to have an accident, why not have an accident in front of a car where you can thrill them instead of having it out in the, in the afternoon with nobody around? No, it don't bother my nerves at all because, uh, I don't know, it's just like an ordinary job now. Uh, you go out the night and put the show on and you come back in. Once you hook your seatbelt, it just don't, it hasn't bothered me for a long time. After financially cleaning up at arenas around the country, the Hollywood Hill Drivers left the local thrill-seekers money-hungry and envious. Could the likes of Archer and other Australian action freaks duplicate the American success? Anyway, they were going to try, using American flag-waving. So Australian shows like the Hollywood Auto Circus, Lord Louie and the US Hell Drivers, the Yankee and Los Angeles Hell Drivers were born. They even prepared expensive ads for TV. Arnie Bird and the Los Angeles Hell Drivers. Every breakfast they eat, maybe their last. But with all the hype, they had nothing to do with America. And they were successful. Yes, it, it was a sell, Ollie. In those days, uh, was it a con? you needed... No, it wasn't a con. We had the action, we had the top shows. And uh, what we had was a genuine article. Typical Aussie energy, and they're smart. Looking at America, trying to improve their act, or beat them at their own game. At the time, one of Archer's sidekicks was a hardened, devil-may-care live-action performer called Noel Oliver. Oliver, who went for a whole bunch of world records, things that I wouldn't even try, like laying on a bed of nails and having tons of rocks smashed on his chest. If my girlfriend ever tried to get me on a bed of nails, I'd have someone for breakfast. Right, I let her... <laughs> In an early promotion, Mad Dog Oliver, as he was later to be called, allowed 1.4 tons of solid rock to be smashed on his chest. That one hurt. Yeah, of course. That's not a soft one, mate. Right. Yep. Another one. Not over. It took the heavy-handed archer 24 minutes to make the stage resemble a quarry and not smash Oliver's bones. Well, mate, we all had a own forte, but I'm glad it was him laying down there. Like, I've laid down on the bed of nails, and I could probably take one or two rocks, but to lay there for that duration is unbelievable. You've, you, it's got to be mind over matter. And he doesn't matter because you don't mind. I didn't mind, so he didn't. <laughs> Right. Well, Tony, Mad Dog Oliver has received a lot of flack on 60 Minutes and other shows. Uh, was Ollie, he a madman yeah. or was he really no. a daredevil who tried it himself first before he asked others to do Ollie, it? Ollie, for those who actually knew him, he was probably smarter than all of them put together. Um, he always thought before he did something and he sold it to make it look really ba bad. His big, bad and wild approach catapults Oliver into prominence. He instantly becomes hot property for promoters. For a movie promotion, Oliver shows how a homely werewolf goes to a drive-in in a totally unorthodox manner. Not by the ticket box, but over it. Oh, I just worry whether it's solid enough and 
I just wonder what village will say if I wipe their ticket box out. The rickety ramp makes Oliver's car lunge to one side. And that is close, even for Ollie Martin, the budding cameraman in the foreground. Now, not taking anything away from him, he would never ask anyone to do a stunt unless he did it first himself anyway. And uh, quite a lot of those stunts that he did do, no one else would ever do it after him anyway. When Oliver announces a stunt, it arouses one simple question. How crazy and daring will it be? No, you're doing this stunt this morning you're calling it a, a mega stunt why are you doing it without a safety harness and without any safety belt well this is on a private track this is a new type of stunt new techniques completely and believe me you are going to see something that's just totally unbelievable but it can be done now i'm not going to do anything that's going to kill me or put me in a wheelchair i know what i'm doing i just want to go out there do a great stunt and put a new form of funny entertainment out there on the arena. Now, Noel, you are pushing a film called Megaforce. Now, that's a spectacular, it's funny, it's got super action, but that's on film. Now, is this car, which is called the Megaforce, is there any tricks to it? Is it a hyped-up car? There is absolutely no tricks whatsoever. It is... All the safety is taken out. This is for real. No movie trickery. It's just real life drama. Noel, some people would say you are crazy doing this. Why are you so positive that you're not going to get killed? Well, Ollie, I know what I'm doing. Technically, we have advanced in stunt work miles beyond anything that was dreamed of three and four years ago. And this is now possible. New things are being thought up each day and all over the world people are coming up with crazy acts. The world is action crazy and believe me Ollie, this one is just the start of bigger things to come. Okay Ollie, let's make this a good crash. With the rehearsal and preparation over, the time for action stations arrives. It's the point of no return. As the adrenaline pumps, Oliver cannot think about life or death. He single-mindedly looks ahead to death-defying commitment. Aspiring daredevils or youngsters must be warned not to copy any of the performances in this production, no matter how simple they may appear in their execution. They are created by experts who work very hard to make them look easy. Possible death or injury awaits those who are not properly trained, as we'll see. He hit the boot and the bonnet. Look at that car. That is tremendous. Really, really great. Oh, gentlemen, thank you. Was it worth waiting for? Sure. Was it a good one? How did the first one go, Jim? Watch those uprights as the somersaulting car stunt rolls in slow motion. Even if Oliver's car didn't ride through the obstacles, the prop vehicles could easily pancake him, and those uprights could create a human shish kebab. Well, not today. That is yet to come. It's the first time that we've worked, or well, the first time that I've worked in over a thousand car crashes without safety gear. Um, and this puts us, I've only got three crashes to go for the 1200. So uh, um, that's not a bad run. And this is the first one without safety gear, except on the road. Hang in there with us. This could be fun. <laughs> I bet you're waiting for me to crash one of these things. No such luck. You can't go crazy at fun parks. These are for fun, and they've got to be safe. But the action arena 
draws big people and draws big crowds because they want to go and see the big fight, the big crash, the big accident. And stuntmen are no different. They put their lives on the line. Every chance they get to bring a few frills and spills to you on the television. They're mad. I can't help it. I can't. I worry about them. What can I do? Well, Jacko, you can show concern, worry or think they're crazy, but man will always stretch daring beyond its elastic limit. Daredevils accept the risk. Naturally, they could be hurt, sometimes badly. Meanwhile, back to the mad Motor Maniacs tour. By the time they reach the Brisbane Astrodome, they've hauled their caravan of thrills 14,000 kilometres across some of the roughest and most desolate roads in the world. The rigs and heavy metal arena are prepared for yet another show. Then, it's waiting for the audience. Will this crowd be as bad as the last, or will the drought of poor attendance be broken in the Sunshine State? Stunt men and super action has thrilled generations of moviegoers. But there's a difference between movie magic and real live daredevil action here on the arena. Well, how hard is it to handle daredevils on the road? Well, actually, Ollie, we, we, we never had any trouble on the road. Uh, the guys, of course, were selected not for their brawn, but for their brain and their personalities, the way they looked after themselves here before we even took off. But uh, they were a bonded uh, group of guys who knew exactly what they were there for, and they were professionals in their field. What makes a daredevil different from, say, a movie stunt guy? Well, a uh, movie stuntman, if they do do uh, something wrong, if it's a wrong... Uh, placings or wrong timing or whatever, they can do it again. With the actual daredevil, he's live and he gets one chance at it only. And uh, if he mucks it up, he mucks it up. That's it. Let's get that extra little bit of lift up. Marco Garbalotto will put you as the girls As stunt coordinator and show director, Archer stays close to the action and makes certain every stunt goes according to plan. Tonight, Richard Delisle, one of Noel Oliver's protégés, will attempt one better than his master. The somersaulting cars stunt with an added touch of lunacy. The vehicles will be set alight. And on hand to separate the acts and draw the crowd's attention from possible bloodshed are the clowns. That extra little bit tonight, mate. Put that foot right through the bloody floor. Always do, mate. Yeah, well, you want that extra quarter of an inch tonight, right? Yeah, this is a bit heavy. Those yeah. two cars are a bit heavy, so... Yeah, I'm I know they're heavy. You've got to get that extra speed up on it. Yeah, mate. I'll... Right? Be time what... OK, buddy. See you soon. Give it a heaps, mate. It's clear that there's competition between the daredevils, each one trying to update an old act and give it more pizzazz. But it's in that little extra where the danger lies. There's got to be a point where the risk is just too great. As the prop cars are lit, the arena audience holds its breath. Will Delisle make it? It will either be a success or a total catastrophe. In this replay, watch how Delisle dives under the dashboard seconds before impact. The master must have taught him something about timing. Mm. 
no arena show would be complete without the petrol heads delight. Two wheel thrills for the bikers. John O'Elliot rides the ramp in a super leap over parked cars. Then the funny people return to prove they too are capable of a little action. They're actually trained stunt clowns who take their jobs seriously. Tonight, Johnny Wonder isn't out to smash a world record. While America's evil Knievel boldly showed the world his sensational exploits. Here's something you may not know. Australia's Johnny Wonder has quietly broken every major motorcycle record. Even Knievel's. Your nerves have got to stop somewhere. Common sense has got to draw the line. You've got to keep your ego locked away in a little box somewhere. And uh, draw a line and say, well, if I go too much harder, I might not get out of it alive. Uh, or worse than that, be smashed up fairly badly. Tonight, getting smashed up wasn't really on the agenda. But even though there were plenty of smashes, it was only the cars which received any damage. And within seconds, the boys are ready for the next stunt. When it comes to battering rams, you could well ask, why? This is a record attempt to smash 20 petrol-soaked walls of fire. For the past 15 shows, Daryl Jacobs has been attempting to smash the battering ram record, which still stands at 15. Unfortunately, Jacobs again didn't make it. Yet with all those flames, he didn't even get a hot head. By now, he's getting used to the lap of honour. It's there for all those who try. Will you be going for another world uh, and another attempt at the world record? Yeah, but in a straighter line, Ollie. That was too much on a, an angle. It didn't start off straight. Started off over there around the bend. And it just, just couldn't, you can't see, you know, because you've got all fire and that. I just took a guess where I was going, you know, so I hope I'll get it next time. In Australia, the major setback for arena shows is the vast distance between locations. As a matter of fact, the whole of North America could comfortably fit within the boundaries of Australia. Australia is a big country with incredible distances between major centres. And that makes it expensive hauling a road show. The biggest problem in Australia is the, the sparsity of the population. Uh, you have to travel thousands of kilometres to get between shows of a few thousand people. Tell me, how many stunt men and special vehicles does a show like this, the Mad Motor Maniacs, have? We've got a team of uh, 12 to 14 stunt men. Uh, a number of trucks to carry ramps and gear, special gear. We pick up what we can in the local towns. Tell me, have you had a smooth run or have there been some real problems along the way? The thing you need to get used to in the outback is the uh, lack of availability of parts and, and things that you need. For example, uh, we had a truck break down a cracked head uh, a couple of hundred miles out of Alice Springs. Uh, on returning to Alice Springs, we found it was going to take three to four days just to have a head gasket flown in. A problem we're not used to in the city, it's always available. We ended up locating a truck in a paddock and taking the head gasket off that and returning, putting it on. Lost three or four days, but we made it. Travelling with a live show, you guys have got to be brothers. Everyone has got to be unified. It's a big thing. You're living in one another's pockets, so to speak, if you can understand me. Uh, these little things like you're forced to eat at certain restaurants, you know, and the food might be bad or something, and you, you're all cop it. You've got to cop that. You know, everyone has a bad day following it, but. Uh, you're all together, that sort of thing. Um, you strike accommodation on roads where it's hard, the guys might be forced to bunk into caravans even because you can't get into motels, you know. There's a lot of little things, but, uh, you know, all together, the guys, they're all brotherhood, mate. They're all united as one, and it, it, it makes for the uh, atmosphere you expect of these guys doing this sort of work. It's, it is really hard, honest. Uh, you've got interstate phone calls to make all the time, your wife, is always ringing up, wondering where you are, if you're all right. It is really hard, honest, it is. Now, are stunt road shows coming to an end because of increased costs? 
Well, that's, a, that's an unfortunate, in fact, it's a very hard question to answer. But yes, I think they are coming to an end, Ollie. Travelling might be over, but Tony Archer is no pessimist. If you don't have a firm booking with an arena show, you can always work up a special fire act on the back lot of a drive-in theatre. Archer is promoting a new head of hair, and he's about to demonstrate it won't fly off with a gust of wind, while Oliver, a little thin on top, isn't enthusiastic. There's a few factors in this stunt that I'm not happy with. What are they? Now, Tony's not wearing a crash helmet. It's just absolutely stupid. The human factor in this particular stunt leaves a lot to be desired as far as I'm concerned. Why is he doing it without a safety helmet? He's doing it to prove his new head of hair on this hair fusion hair, uh, but it's a hard way to, uh, to earn a living doing it that way. Well, Tony, this is it. You're going to see now whether your new head of hair stands up to a stuntman's daily routine. Yeah, right, Ollie. Well, I've just had it put on and uh... I think it's a bit like a chap that gets his new car. He's got to take it for a run to test it out, doesn't he? And you are really going to lie in this coffin with all those high explosives around them without a safety helmet? Well, it's, uh, that's what I want to do, yes, Ollie. I don't know what's going to happen to his eardrums. He only has to be a little bit out of line with those explosives so close to his head that he could be an idiot for life. How is this stunt normally performed? It's normally performed, or it has been up until now, for the last 20 years with just straight gel ignite and TNT. That was the old atomic coffin, a great stunt. Now he's adding in 10 gallons of Napol C, which is a highly toxic explosive force. Anything could happen. It's only been used in close human contact once before. Now, taking them individually, primer cord, what could that do? 800 feet, I mean. 800 feet of primer cord, if you could just take wrap that twice around a tree, just a little bit of primer cord, twice around a tree and I'll snap that tree in half. The gel ignite, there's enough gel ignite there to pull down a three-storey building. The napole C, you cannot ever get closer than 10 feet from that going off without having third-degree burns, no matter what your protective gear's like. How much damage could they do if they were all placed in a more restricted area? If you had those explosives in a supermarket, there would be absolutely nothing left. You'd be picking up baked beans a hundred yards away. Why do you take such risks? Well, that's what the stunt business is all about, Ollie. Um, there's no room for any half-hardness in today's standards, and you either give all or you give nothing. If you don't give all, mate, you get out of it. It's as simple as that. You mean you're in there for the sheer spectacle? Right. Arnie Berg has had his crash helmet split down the middle and there's been a lot of stuntmen have been knocked unconscious just by the force of the old blast. Now we've got more. What happened at Winton? At Winton, because of a very hot day, uh, it just caused total havoc with fire. Well, Tony, you've done this stunt before with much less explosives, but how do you feel with the super quantity being set off around you this time? Well, to be quite honest, I'm naturally worried. There is a hell of an amount of danger involved with it, even with the normal coffin, but as it is, yes, I'm worried. Starting the countdown, Tony. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, Well, Tony, there's not much of the coffin left. Even the lid's gone. Better than lid in my head, Ollie. <laughs> well, at least you've shown that you can keep the hair on. Yeah, right. Well, uh, 
I'll tell you one thing. Next time I'm at a drive-in, I'm keeping away from the back lot just in case you've left some explosives behind. It's sheer lunacy. The atomic coffin is over in seconds. But as the fireball is slowed down, we can imagine the pure madness which must be running through the daredevil's veins. It can't be mere blood. That is an open-air crematorium. And remember, Archer is inside. Not madness. Looking back, was the effort <coughs> worth it? To me it was, Ollie, yes. I've uh, set out to achieve what I did. And um, I think that last stunt I did, I think that sort of just said, I said to myself, well, that's as far as I want to go in it. You know, that was the climax of your career? That was for me, yes. And um, I'm quite happy now to walk away from the whole thing and say, well, I've done it. Everybody dreams about success on the big screen. And some men and women are no different. For a chance, at that big one, that big dream, that big apple. Hundreds of kids each year answer ads for a chance to be trained as stuntmen, but not many make it, and that's unfortunate. But for the ones who do, good on them! I'm glad it's you and not me. Attracted by starry advertisements while in search of fame and fortune, the young hopefuls come to learn the tricks of the trade. Noel Oliver runs his school in a tough way. What else would you expect? It's not a glossy presentation in some theatrical suite, but in the back of nowhere, a disused quarry. For 50 bucks an afternoon, the old master teaches would-be daredevils his unique way of being daring. And that's to be plain tough. So whatever punishment Oliver thinks the body can take, he hands it out in large doses. Oliver runs through a number of techniques which his students will use to prepare them for possible work in the stunt world. When training is complete, this wild bunch should be able to perform anything from simple falls and fights to being blown away. The study of knockovers allows for those hit and run accidents to look more lifelike. But you can't help thinking, they're a bunch of loons. screens were naturally designed for stunt men and women to practice their high fall technique. We'll shortly see to what deadly extremes practice like this can be taken. From this lineup of aspiring danger freaks, only a few will stand head and shoulders above the rest. Only someone like Billy Smith, the Irishman, will take his positive dreams to new heights. To help make ends meet, Smith works as a part-time DJ. 
then a promotion to publicize the Superman movies at a chain of Melbourne drive-ins, becomes a hair-raising situation of bizarre preparation meeting opportunity. We're standing on the roof of Melbourne's Travelodge Hotel, and from this position, a stuntman, the press called Billy Superman Smith, will leap 169 feet to a landing pad below. And this is where he'll land. Cardboard cartons, sponge rubber, and car tires. If something goes wrong, if he misses, then this. I don't know how we're going to tie it in, but we've got to work it somehow. Tony, do you know how we can do it? How we can hook in cartons here? If it's feasible, mate. We've got a low profile carton, we should be right. We're not going to need it, but let's have it anyway. Well, I'm going to get up there and check the pad, mate. Just... Okay. I want to make sure we've got everything right. Yep. Where are you going? You're up in there. Now, do you want to skin over that? Oh, where do you... Is that impact point, Billy? Right yeah, there, yeah, where I want to skin over here, but only a, a slight. Can I have a heavy skin, please, fellas? Oh, big hole in. Huh? Sinking down a lot there. Yeah, that's all right, Billy. Starting that way, from there. Tony, that gives us an untidy end there, but that that doesn't matter, does it? There, an untidy, an untidy back end, right? Hi, right, Billy. Hi, Owen. How's it all looking? Good, great, great. It's going long. It's a long way up, mate. I know it's a long way up. You know what happened last night? What? Three o'clock in the morning, I woke up, and I thought, I've got this horrible position tomorrow morning of counting this guy down. From 10 to 0. Now, I'm counting it down either to glory or to gloom. And I'm going to feel too good. 10 seconds to count me down. It takes me 4 seconds to come down. <laughs> I'm, I'm, done. I'm sorry yeah, to interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt. Billy, it's time to put the flying suit on. When he eventually leaps without a parachute from his perch so far off the ground, Billy the Irishman Smith will travel at 70.9 miles per hour, or close to 120 kilometers per hour, straight towards the ground. There is an obvious question. How does Smith feel, knowing other stuntmen have died in similar circumstances, using airbags for a soft landing? Whereas our superhero is all set to experience landing on a pad, the way the old Hollywood stuntmen built them. Hard. Well, I feel absolutely thrilled at the idea of going off. Uh, there's no fear whatsoever, and I know when I'm going off, I'm going down to the bottom, and I'm looking forward to it. What preparations or what other stunts have you done in this type of area, the high falls, I mean? In this type of area, high falls, I've done village drive-ins, numerous of village drive-ins. Uh, How high are they? Uh, the highest one would be 105 foot drive-in. Well, this is 169 feet, which is a world record, into a hard landing pad. Doesn't that frighten you? No, well, I'm confident with uh, Noel Oliver, which we, my stunt trainer is building the pad. I'm pretty happy with the pad that he's building. If I wasn't happy, then I just wouldn't be up here. Just recently, you in fact, uh, is it true that you saw a man commit suicide jumping 17 floors into in, to the ground? Yeah, well, actually, I didn't see him jump, but I heard the thump, and when I turned around, I ran over him. It just wasn't a thing I could do. The man was absolutely dead. He was just a mess, and I stood there for three hours. So many things flashing through my mind, you know, and just a funny thing to think over. Well, obviously, you were resolving your own position in life and where you stand in relation to something like that. Yeah. But here you are. You are going to jump 169 feet, and the same sort of thing could happen to you. Doesn't that scare you at all? No, because I know that I'm not a person that's out to commit suicide. I'm out to be a winner, not a suicide person to jump off and kill myself. Uh, doesn't worry me at all. No, no fear. I'm happy. In a moment, you will see Billy Superman Smith appearing at the top of this building. If somebody up there or some crazy intuition has told him that he, he cannot do it, 
then certainly he will not do it. And until the last minute, we do not know what his decision will be. If it is no, we and you, I'm sure, will understand. This slow motion shot might make you wonder why bother to create make-believe with special effects when there are daredevils who can do it for real. Tell me, what special abilities do you need to do the sort of work you're doing as a thrill seeker? Well, number one would have to be reflex. Your reflex have to be so razor sharp uh, I consider my reflex uh, very sharp indeed. Well, how can you demonstrate that? Well, what I could do is put a coin in your hand, tell you when I'm coming to take the coin, give you the chance to close your hand, and I'll still take that coin. Do you regard death dodging as entertainment? Of course it's entertainment. I mean, anyone, you know, People are bloodthirsty. They they would just love to get there, and you know, if it works, they're happy. If it goes wrong, they're even happy again. How long do you think? Maybe ten minutes. Get ready. Believing you shouldn't keep a good daredevil down. Smith takes his high flying to other lofty heights. To promote a prominent discotheque, he dresses in Christmas gear to drag the media along to experience the world's first flying Santa Claus. This is the big boy. Now the plumb line, which roughly, very roughly, marks the centre of the landing pad, is appropriately a champagne bucket, and not just a stone on the end of a string. Well, things have improved. This is, incidentally, not a major record leap, but observe how the Superboy's style has changed. He now teases the audience and heightens the danger by not acknowledging his success immediately. The three-second fall must be exaggerated. The summer wind causes difficulty in lining up the centre of the pad, 
But Smith, in true style, isn't about to disappoint a curious crowd. Now you'll have to pull forward. You tell them which way to pull, Billy, but don't do it, you worry. Now, don't wait now. Go! He's on. can't you make a full-time living out of daredevil work or stunt work? Well, uh, well it's, a, it's a vicious circle we're living in. You've got to be able to compete among other stuntmen. If you can't compete, then there's just no chance. No stuntman is going to make room to let some newcomer come in and do their work. I mean, it's as simple as that. It's a, um, you've got to do stunts that are outrageous, that may sound impossible, and do this successfully. Uh, if you can't do that, then you're not going to make an imprint. And I can guarantee you, no one is going to help. I've had too many people come up to me and say, how do we go about it? And it hurts me to have to tell them that they're just running up against a brick wall. To tell people that, that they'll just get nowhere. And it's true, because I fought hard to get where I am. And I'm still fighting. But uh, that's only because it, I'm headstrong and I want to make it. Stunt people, daredevils, are the kind of people that the movie industry can use to elevate that promotion to a spectacular level. And I think they're probably the few opportunities that they do have in this country. Now, now what are some of the movies you've actually promoted? Oh, it was a film called The Beastmaster, where we had a live panther on a leash going through the city. Um, the panther didn't get nasty, but the council did, and they said that uh, you weren't allowed to have live big cats on leashes in the city. We were fined and so on, but that made news. Uh, in fact, it made news even more so by being taken to the Royal Children's Hospital uh, and being paraded through the wards where little kids who'd never had a chance to get close to a, a wild animal were able to pat a wild beast. I can remember a, a film we did called Firefox uh, years ago when I was with a different company where we had a man as a human Firefox and I think he travelled something like 120 metres down a steel cable. He was set on fire and, uh, and crashed into a pad at the end. But he was hurt? He was hurt, yes, he was hurt. He did it to help us promote the movie. He knew the risk he was taking and I'm sure the media came to see him get injured. Lightweight Philip Allenson wasn't thinking about injury on that cool Friday in December. The slim character certainly wouldn't qualify in the Superman stakes, yet Allenson has the determination of a jungle beast. In fact, he started his career as a lion tamer. Today, his mind is set on promoting the Clint Eastwood movie, Firefox. All, as you can see by the padding I've got on, uh, the flame will go actually behind me, as um, long as the wind doesn't swap directions, and then I'll cop the flame back in the face, which is when it gets a slightly dangerous. Have you practiced the stump very much? No, it hasn't been practiced at all. It's a, it's a one-off. Uh, shortly we'll be sending down a tyre which is equivalent to my weight uh, so we can get an idea of sag in the cable and uh, then we'll set up our landing pad and hopefully I'll be ready to go. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. There's your impact pad, right here. That's where it goes, right? Yeah, that's where that comes. Still comes back here. Part of the preparation calls for the use of an Australian invented fire retardant, water gel. It's an icy cold syrupy liquid which retards burning. Huh? 
grinding over a bit more. One main right to hold it. Yeah, yeah. hold it. Yeah, 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 hold it. Ye
and I was dead set terrified. Did you really think you were dying or going to die? I thought I was dead. When you're doing uh, a touring show for maybe uh, 30 weeks of the year and you're doing consistently two shows a week, you have got to have accidents. It doesn't matter who it is uh, or what the organisation is, you have got to have a certain amount of accidents. The Daredevils naturally don't think about accidents. Is that Jacob's boy trying those fiery battering rams again? But after this one, he could well question his manhood. The reason this stunt work's created is because the public want to see a stunt. They, they really come there to see something go wrong. They'd love to see it all go right, but in the back of their mind, they would really love to see something go wrong. Well, how do you feel when someone gets killed or pretty badly hurt? First of all, I laugh and then I, you know, and then, then, and then I feel a bit, you know, shit it, shit it off, you know. But I've never seen someone die myself. How do you feel when someone gets hurt? Uh, yeah. It's pretty good. I like it. So you like blood and gore? Yeah. It's feet first in this drive-in screen leap for Jim Murray. He drops 26 metres and attempts a brave smile. But Murray has ruined his back permanently. Napoleon Vila spent months recuperating in hospital after smashing feet first through the pad, all in the name of movie promotion. What happens when you see someone getting hurt? How do you feel? Not bad. You feel good about that? Yeah. Dale Buggins became internationally known as one of Australia's greatest daredevils. He took the thrills and spills in his stride, but pressure of work forced him to suicide. But they keep coming, they keep trying, and they keep crumbling. And Oliver, the master larrikin, isn't immune to broken bones. But of course, only he would drive a vehicle off the roof of a four-story car park and drop in the street. One of Australia's leading karate stuntmen, Mal Lomax, has worked with superstars like Chuck Norris, but he doesn't take the action business lightly. I like to, I like to run through a stunt at least five times prior to doing it, especially if it's a high fall or a waterfall or, you know, falling into water. I like to go through it from different height levels to get the feel, because if you're doing a 100 foot or 80 foot fall in the water and there's a couple of matches floating beneath you, they're like um, knives by the time they hit your body and they'll rip you apart. And I've seen it happen. A lot of stuntmen, you know, uh, they don't take any safety precautions and that's, that's silly, that's stupid. To me that's stupid because uh, you're not proving anything. Stuntmen, to be a professional stuntman, the safety features are to be looked into. And when you do stunts, where's the thrill when you know you could get hurt? Or maybe doesn't it matter? Yeah, it does matter. Just before a stunt, you're very, very nervous until they say roll cameras and then all the nervousness goes. But uh, you don't want to get hurt, that's for sure. Russell. Oh, yeah. Good 
I mean, I'm coming out right out of position, mate. It's all funny, hanging away, right? What happened? What went wrong? I uh, grabbed the rope too high when I went through. I, the steering was quick on the car, and I couldn't lay down until I went through the top. How badly hurt were you? Yeah, well, I was uh, pretty badly hurt on that. I had concussion, uh, ruptured stomach, dislocated shoulder, and four broken ribs. Is that all? That's all I had. <laughs> How long did it take to recover? Oh, eight weeks, eight, nine weeks. Yeah. Have, have you totally recovered? Uh, in my except for my shoulder, yeah. Avoiding injury is often difficult when the action Aussies try to deliver what their advertisements propose. In the thrill business, lives are lost on a regular basis. Sometimes a crazy dude will even risk the hangman's noose for a front page story. Everyone believed the hanging promotion was going well, until it struck home that Bob Tanner was actually choking. Sometimes along the way, death comes to innocent bystanders caught up in the hype of promotion. Promotional hype, spectacle, and any type of visual bravado captures the attention of an audience. Years ago, university students take to sledgehammers to prove they can demolish a piano. Even an old car. Decades later, Sydney's Go Jukai disciplinarians take to a small sedan at a fun park. What's new? And you guessed it, it's to promote a movie. Taking inspiration from past chivalry, a $1,000 purse is offered in an update of medieval jousting. The arena promoters use the age-old basics, but allow the knights to use crash helmets and padded lances. But they still fall, they still tumble, and they still get hurt. anywhere you've got to be off your rocker especially in Australia because there's less opportunities and only a couple of fellas have hung in there long enough to make any sort of name for themselves you're right Jacko like Russell Allen and Billy Smith learning from experience Smith tries to get publicity for a sponsor the aim to get his clients name on TV or in the newspapers how good is Billy as a stuntman Roland I tell you I've, I've seen a lot of stuntmen even American stuntmen and uh, he, he's quite unique in a way because he, most stuntmen only specialize in one kind. If it's, if it's a fall, it's all on free fall. In this case, uh, he doesn't confine himself to just a basic stunt. And the guy needs a break. I want to expose him. Because uh, once, especially Hollywood sees the thing that he does, which is not just a simple car stunt, uh, I think... Uh, uh, it's just a matter of time. He wants to be a stuntman. I told him he's playing Russian roulette with his own life. And, well, he won't listen to me, and that's just it. What can I do about it? I don't like him doing it. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you one thing, I'm definitely proud of him. That is one bit of the truth I have to come off with. I'm proud that he has the nerve to do what he does, and to see it through, you know what I mean? Like, mm. that way I'm proud, but on the other hand, terribly, terribly frightened. When I go out, I can't afford to stop and think about my family, my daughter, or whatever the case may be. I can't afford to think about them. 
because that's only going to cause fad, bad vibes whenever I'm performing a stunt. I just can't afford to think about any unrelating thought to what I'm doing. The weather is against him, but Smith attempts to smash through an exploding van and land safely on old car shells. He doesn't quite make it. But already Smith is mentally planning a leap over two cars racing head-on towards him at 120 kilometers an hour, or possibly 75 miles an hour sounds a little slower. How's everyone there? Really, how successful was it? Well, like I said, the ground was going so to be So we had never problem. discussed what's going to happen to Billy's family that gets killed, because he tells us it's not going to happen. Look on the bright side. He said there's only one man. He only fears one man in this world, and that's the man up above, for he can take him any time. Coming up in the next couple of months, I will have two Pervy Sharika sports cars travelling at me at a 140 k's. Now, what I'll be doing is a physical human leap over the top. No protection, no nothing, straight over the top. That's just one of them. You mean the cars will pass under you? The cars will pass underneath me. And that's where we started off with that old stunt pro, Tony Archer. He comes out of retirement to provide advice and moral support for a mate. So, uh, we're quite confident that Billy can do it. Um, it's not without its dangers, of course. Is that going to be your last piece of deadly action? Oh, I think so, Ollie. Um, I've come back to help Billy. Um, I feel proud, actually, the fact that he's uh, asked me to um, come up and uh, assist him in this stunt. From an inspired, karate-based notion, Smith believes he can leap over any object moving towards him. Within reason, that is. First, it's a wooden pole held shoulder high, rushed at him. Then he brings on a motorcycle, charging towards him at 80 kilometers an hour. What a pleasant way of spending a few hours. Oh well, to each his own. So far, it's worked just fine with the poles and bikes. Now let's try a quick racing car. Mm, no problem. But no sooner does he feel comfortable leaping over one car when Smith starts talking about two vehicles, nose to tail, passing under him like an arrow. has within his own mind an attitude that would get him almost to do anything Ollie. He's, he has the capabilities and the actual attitude for training to almost do anything he puts his mind to. If I didn't think Billy was capable of doing the stunt, I wouldn't be training him. Try and describe it if he doesn't leap up in time and let those cars pass under him. It's something I'd like not to think about, but um, I can say the stunt has been tried before and um, the result was, of course, um, pretty, pretty bad. bad. It, um, I think it broke the guy's leg and ankle in something like 16 places, and he was very lucky. So Smith starts his practice at Calder Raceway. He leaps beside the speeding car and clears the required distance and height each time. OK, Billy, we'll have a look at this. I'll roll some of this film. Now, that's, of course, the old jump. And that looked that's... close. Clearly clearing yeah, the car, isn't it? Clearing a bit. They're really moving, aren't they? Well, that was travelling. How fast was that? I'd say about 70 kilometres. Ooh, yes. Well, you've cleared it there. We're well, looking at the new one. That's a Porsche. Yeah. How do you feel looking at that frame by frame? Are you confident you can do the stunt? Makes me feel good. Makes me feel a lot better watching it frame by frame. 
it's really hard whenever you do it out there and doing it for real because it just happens so quick. Now, it really is flirting with death. Aren't you at all worried that you just might be totally written off? Well, I'm not going to worry about it. I mean, we all heal at one stage or another. When we're dead, we're dead, but we, you know, when we heal, we heal, that's it. It's only a matter of months. I'll so you back. really are confident about, about doing it? I'm confident, definitely. Definitely. Billed as an added attraction at a major drag meeting, Smith is totally prepared and confident of success. Then a snag. Insurance companies won't cover the racetrack. Not just against Smith being smashed up, that's his risk, but against the long shot of someone in the audience getting hurt. Although he is poised to perform a major stunt, which would possibly give him an international reputation, he isn't able to prove his outstanding and yet quite crazy ability. And the show goes on without him. Is there any way that Calder would allow him to perform here? Yes, the only way we could achieve something in this regard is that the activity take place with no members of the public on site and Supersmith signing our normal release. So it has to be a private stunt? A private stunt with no other persons around the vicinity of the stunt. Naturally, no daredevil would perform without an audience. After all, it's the audience which gives a performer the required thrill and adrenaline rush. The cancellation of Smith's deadly stunt was blamed on bad weather conditions. When you look down on a track where Super Smith was to perform the suicide leap, you can't help but get goosebumps. Maybe the bad weather conditions and the insurance problems were an omen. Russell Allen has experienced plenty of positive omens, and they've all indicated that he keep two-wheeling his vehicles. Allen is that other evergreen face on the action arena. He holds the Australian 1.5 kilometre record for driving a sedan on two wheels. Melbourne's Thunderdome. And this time, Alan takes something a little bigger two-wheeling and snares a world record for holding the F100 at a very peculiar angle for 20 kilometres. And this year has been good for Alan. He's had major TV coverage as well as a front page for his scrapbook and paid work in TV series and movies, including a new American flick, which is the remake of the old Mission Impossible TV series. And I'm also concerned about survival, of the staying alive kind. Well, what can you say? That was close. Russell, how dangerous is it driving a tractor on two wheels on a highway? Well, it's not really dangerous, Ollie. It's uh, pretty exciting. Yeah, if it was dangerous, I wouldn't be doing it. But Well, what would happen if the machine tipped? <laughs> well, I could wreck the tractor maybe and lose my sponsor, uh, do a little bit of damage. Has it been tough getting permission to perform your stunts? Yeah. It's very hard, Ollie. Yeah, it's very hard to get sponsors in this country and uh, to get anyone to let you on the highway, and that's nearly impossible. Tell me, what records do you have for two-wheeling, four-wheel vehicles? Uh, we've got the Australian record for driving a Commodore on two wheels. Uh, that was in Darwin. The world record at the Thunderdome at Calder Park in a truck is 4.908 kilometres. And the uh, track there was in uh, Calder Park too, and that was 600 metres. Well, is there any motivation for what you're doing, say, buried back in your school days? Did the kids give you a hard time? Yeah, with, uh, with my problem when I was younger, there was no... There's no encouragement at all. The teachers that stick you with the dunce's hat on, and that I was really depressed till I was about 30 year old. I was very shy. What keeps you going? Do you have something to prove? <laughs> yeah, a lot of people ask me that, Ollie. Uh, maybe I have in some ways, but I don't think I, uh, as a stuntman, it's just my job. But personally, I've got dyslexia, and uh, maybe I try and prove myself that way. Well, what does that mean? Dyslexia means I can't read and write. Now, has that been a problem uh, generally in life? Yeah, it has been a problem all my life uh, because if I speak to sponsors and all that, they're very efficient. Where I'm, I'm not efficient that way, where I try and prove myself as a tractor and well, I can't otherwise. See. Now, Russell, what about life? Are you happy with it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I, uh, I used to be told I was used to be sweeping gutters, but I've never swept a gutter yet. Russell Allen has certainly kept away from the gutter oh. with his rewarding work in movies. For Ricky and Pete, he takes a tumble as a bumbling country cop 
A spectacular sequence in running from the guns gives Alan a chance to display his crazy driving ability. He was also one of the original action freaks in the internationally known Mad Max. For Billy Daredevil Smith, the show also goes on. He too has graduated to movies. For a made-for-video flick called Houseboat Horror, he prepares a fire gag. Now we hear about all kinds of movie trickery. Uh, how dangerous is the Total Inferno fire stunt? Well, there's a lot of preparation involved in a fire stunt. Uh, that's why you find that there's not too many uh, human torches in movies because of the danger that's involved with uh, an inferno. Well, how prepared are you? Well, we're well prepared here today. We've got uh, we've got air crew with the safety crew, stunt coordinator, uh, first aid. So we're certainly going into it all the way because we want no mistakes on this. It's just uh, too important. Well, how important is it to you? Well, obviously, I mean, if I get burned in this one, there won't be another one. I feel better not looking at pink, you know what I mean? It really feels good. Although Smith is in high spirits, his daughter Tanya looks on nervously. She's a regular fan, but this time she feels something will go wrong. Tanya, are you starting to get worried now? Yes. What's going through your mind? Well, that he's going to get killed and he's, and he's still going to move around and that he's hot and they don't know when to spray him. Do you think he'll get hurt? Yes. Smith is using water gel, the fire retardant. Okay, I'll do this first. And then it'll be a flux. Okay. Sort of out of frame sure. or whatever. It's but, a... um, so how long do you reckon you it'll go for? How long do you reckon Mate, you've got? When he drops to his knees, Look, it's over. No, I mean, like, roughly it, how long can you it, be alive for? It could be 20 seconds. It could be 30 seconds. Whatever. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how this stuff's going to hold out. Okay. As soon as that heat starts coming through, I'm down. You're down the ground. That's okay. it. Right. That's, That's it. fine. That's right. fine. Yep. Start spraying him and stuff, Ken. All right. Mainly around the body What's here. It's not so much on the back. Not so it's much all right, mate. I'm putting it on your head now. Don't worry about it. Tip some on his arms. Not very wet. Not Take it easy. Take it easy. Round here. Round here. Round here. Not too high. Up. Not, not too high up. Right. Make sure none get on my feet. All right. Mate. Oh, it's on your feet. More gel. Well, just douse your feet with gel. It's all right, mate. Hang on. Full on. This time, being positively over-cautious, Smith uses too much gel and becomes saturated. I haven't got time. Can we undo this? Also, the air in the tank is used up before the call for action. So what are you going to do now? Sit me up. You're going to do it without Sit it? Sit me up. Come on. No, he'll take a breath. Time. He can hold it for 30 seconds, and when he's out of it, he'll, he'll just drop. As we've gone this far, I don't even know what we're going to light up like now. It's all soaked in. Is it worth being a stuntman? Of course it is. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Can you imagine what you look like? I can imagine what I feel like as well, yeah. yeah it's great. So will you be going on as a stuntman? Oh, definitely. Definitely. There's no stopping. I mean, this is just, this is one of the, 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 the many, I suppose. It didn't quite look like the raging inferno Smith expected. But once the stunt is incorporated in the movie, it fills the bill. Hollywood's still a big dream? Of course it is. Always has been, always will be. Why? Well, I mean, that's it. That, that, that's the place to be. That's where it's all happening. I mean, uh, 
you know, let's get out there and thrill them. Let's show them what we've got down under. Do you really have an ambition to leap from some tall building as some superhero? Well, I heard that Century City's quite a nice place, Avenue of the Stars. Maybe one day I'll get down there and jump off one of their buildings. Thanks, Billy. The best of luck. Thank you. The big dream of Hollywood glitter and being a star is always present. It seems like deja vu. Wasn't it Hollywood which inspired the first generation of Australian daredevils? These days, any fresh crop of action bucks could well ask where the old hands have finally come to rest. Where is their pasture of greatness? Contacts have reported Mad Dog Oliver has disappeared. Richard Delisle has found a peaceful acre, and these days, farming is giving him all the excitement he wants. Philip Allenson, still feeling the pains of his outrageous ambition, takes it easy as a pet shop animal buyer. Tony Archer now makes a living selling used cars. There are no regrets and no more contracts for arena action. Russell Allen knows a daredevil world record holder can't be employed every day. He also works as a motor mechanic and makes himself available to the local movie industry. Billy Smith believed in his dream of leaping from a building in Century City, California. But he committed suicide before the dream became reality. Quick as a flash, the action parade passes. However, there'll always be some kid somewhere prepared to risk his neck to entertain an audience. So, like the old pros would say, break a leg. Well, Jago, thanks for taking the ride with us through some of Australia's daredevil action. We can go for another lap if you can stand the pace. Uh, I'm not sure whether I really want to. Stand the pace. Get my drift. <laughs> I'm just getting into the action mode. Until next time, we'll be seeing ya! Oh!